Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to continue to look at super filter. Now this time we're going to use super filter as a date filter and see what are the different options that are available. Okay, we are in the Power BI desktop file and I have uh, already installed the super filter visual. And uh, this visual again is available in Microsoft App Source. So it's not part of the default set of visuals that show up in uh, Power BI Desktop, it's a, it's a visual that's available in App Store. So you need to uh, download and install it. <clears throat> so once that's done, so let's see how it functions. Right? So uh, like before, um, you know, just click on it. And then this time I'm going to start with date. Now by default, the date is uh, shown as a hierarchy. So similar to the previous video where we used uh, product, uh, hierarchy this is a date hierarchy you can select dates at different levels of the hierarchy right um, so that's pretty cool um, nothing special and then also the the, the uh, search feature still works so you can click on that button and search at different levels uh, similar to the previous video and I'll put a link to the previous video for these features now uh, it gets more interesting once we go into the format section here and start uh, start uh, formatting this a little bit. So let's go to facet filter and then uh, let me make this a little bigger. Now by default, this is a visual dropdown. Of course, you can make it a list uh, or a tile and so forth. Similar, very similar to my previous video, right? Now, let me go back to uh, the data well and then change this from a hierarchy to date. Now by default, now this is a, a slider. Now I just added a simple visual here so we can see the data change uh, in the bottom. All right, so going back to the super filter, uh, this is uh, you know standard, you can use the uh, slider to move the uh, you know simple, regular, what is available out of the box as well uh, in, in the out of the box slicer, nothing special there. Now let's go to the format section and then um, here, in the date uh, filter section, I can, by default, it's a slider. And then in the, within the slider, there are different options that are available. You can set the slider step to be by day, week, month, or year. So you can, if you set by month, as you move the slider, you can go to the next month and so forth. And you can also, uh, by default, it's by day, of course, and uh, there's a bunch of other formatting options. Now, also, you can have a static option or a dynamic option. So see how the slider uh, changes if it's static versus dynamic. Um, so that's an option. And of course, you can click on the little calendar icon and the whole calendar pops up. Now, we'll go into the full detail calendar in a little bit. Let's uh, stick to slider. Uh, and one more thing I want to show here is you can also select days off. Uh, so, you know, by default, it's Sunday and uh, Saturday are off, but, you know, you can set it based on your needs. Now, uh, if I go back to the slider section, actually, let's go back to the general section and then change this to calendar. Now, this visual is shows up as a calendar, right? Um, so this is, uh, so this makes for a more interesting visual now. Um, and also, we can add, just like uh, how we did in the earlier videos, I can add a measure into this visual. So now it shows me the values for each day uh, in the calendar, right? And then let's go back to format again. And then um, once it's set into calendar mode, uh, I can also set up my default date. So it highlights the current date, right? You can also set it up for different dates as well. And you can set up a heat map too. So this helps to uh, with your data if you want to create a heat map uh, that is part of uh, of this uh, slicer or filter, super filter. So it basically it's combining functionality of a couple of different visuals into a single visual. So you get uh, you get the Im uh, effect of uh, heat map as well. Now there is also this section called presets. So if I enable presets. What happens is you see these options, right? These are preset filters. So uh, for it, let me go to December. So when I say today, it selects to today and my data changes accordingly. Today and yesterday, 
or let's say I just pick max date. That's the max date of my data, uh, which is right now December 31st, uh, or the min date. So if I select min date, so it's 1-15-2017. You see the data changes to 2017. So by default, you have this option. So that's pretty cool, all these presets filters. So it helps to quickly uh, get to where we want to where, without having to open the uh, slicer or filter, click all the different options. This is out of the box, right? So that's pretty cool. And within the preset filter, there are multiple options. Right? You can do this week, month, quarter, or you can also do month to date, quarter to date, and so forth. So if I click on quarter to date, it shows me um, the the date range now is 10 1 to 12 11, and it, uh, the visuals update accordingly. Um, now, to add to this, so if I leave that preset there and then go into, I believe it is in, okay, yeah, the fiscal year. Now, you know, if my company's fiscal year is not the calendar year, let's say my fiscal year starts in July. Now, if I select July and then select year to date, you see this filter, it automatically selects from July 1st through my current year of data, right? So that's pretty cool. So let's say I want to go to uh, a prior year, it, uh, because I'm doing it for the current year, it is showing me current year, uh, year to date. So that's a preset filter again. Uh, and it, it's definitely useful where, you know, typically you have to create these um, as special filters or dynamic filters and so forth. But this is out of the box and it also handles the fiscal year as well. Now let me, let me change the uh, fiscal year to start from January, just set that back. And then uh, actually, one more thing here is if I expand out calendar, there is this option for multiple date range filters. So if I select that, now I have the option of selecting multiple date ranges for my filter, uh, for my uh, slicer or filter, right? So I can select one range here and then may, what, let, sorry, let's go back. Let's select this range and then I can click on this plus, add another range of values and so forth. So it gives me this option of selecting multiple date ranges. Now, typically we had to go in and click different dates. Uh, it, it was multiple clicks, but now with this, we can uh, keep adding different date ranges and uh, it, it, it's in memory, it adds everything here and then the data changes accordingly. And, uh, and the best part about this is, uh, I, I believe this pop-up mode functionality, I, I mentioned in the earlier video too, it's, uh, I think it's one of the coolest features. So I can do that and then now if uh, it, it reduces in size. I, I have just the preset filter, so I can just use these. Uh, and then if I want more selections, I can click on that, fo uh, not focus mode, sorry. Let's go back and click on this pop-up and then it pops up. Now I have my filters, which I'd selected from earlier and so forth. And I can work with this calendar visual, click okay, and then it goes back. So it's a, I think that's, that is a, a big deal for me, the ability to uh, ability to have this pop-up mode, uh, I think is a game changer. Now, I think those those are the key key features with this date, uh, ability to use super filter as a date filter in this. And I, I'm hoping they'll add a few more, um, you know, keep adding to it, make it more awesome. And the, and the, the formatting is amazing. You, you've got pretty much all the formatting options that is available in any other uh, of the visuals. Yeah, give this a try and uh, let us know what you think. And as usual, if you've got any questions, obvious.com.